We sat down with University of the Incarnate Word head football coach Eric Morris on National Signing Day Part 2. The interview also came just days after the Super Bowl. You know, the Super Bowl that saw former Morris recruit Patrick Mahomes lead the Chiefs past the Niners for the title. Uh, because all this was going on, we chatted with Morris about his newest recruiting class and his relationship with Mahomes. Both are on SportsTonight.com. Got to scroll down some to see him, but in the cards, Eric Morris in his words. And local coaches' bird's eye view in pursuing Super Bowl MVP are on there. Turns out the Mahomes convo was just part one of our chat with Morris. Interesting stuff there about how the East Texas native wasn't highly recruited. Here in part two, among other things, we talk about Coach Morris's time at Texas Tech with the NFL's hottest star right now and what it's like to be the guy who discovered Patrick Mahomes. So you get him on campus. Was there a moment where he did something and you thought to yourself, okay, everything that I thought about this kid is going to come to fruition because, holy moly, he just did that. Yeah, he, he's always carried himself with a lot of confidence. I mean, has a lot of moxie, a lot of savvy. Um, our players gravitated to him kind of as a natural leader um, just because of the confidence that he has as a competitor. But, yeah, I think the first time that we went live in that fall camp, um, Davis Webb was our starter. Patrick was, was buying for our backup spot. We put him with, with the twos. Um, I think he scored on three straight drives, but there was one uh, particular play where, you know, it's live out there and, and he takes off and he's scrambling to the left and running full speed and he flips his hips and flips a ball, you know, with no effort. And it went like 58 yards in the air, perfectly thrown to a backside post. And so I remember sitting in, in the meeting room with Coach Kingsbury and we kept rewinding it. And like, we're like looking at each other and we rewind it again. And then we start doing the math, like how far did that go? And then we rewind it again and he's running full speed left, throwing it with his right, which is extremely hard to do. And then it's going that far. So we had to sit in there for 10 minutes and kind of just calculate what just happened and how perfect of a throw it was on the run where, you know, for most people it's impossible. Um, even for most elite quarterbacks, it's impossible. So I think that was the first time where we were like, this kid can do some things that, that most can't. And, um, but then over the course of time, I think we had to wrap our minds around that like, I mean, at times there's gonna be some backyard football and he's gonna break out of the pocket. And we had to accept that, you know, cause that's something that you don't coach. So then we started implementing drills to, to teach our receivers, um, you know, when he does go in the scramble mode, what to do. We had to make up rules for, for them, and we had to practice that. And so it was almost like organized chaos practicing, you know, him breaking the pocket, everybody's running the routes, and then we make rules where everybody's got to get over to him. And, and, you know, just over the course of time, watching him make some of those unbelievable throws outside of the pocket, running full speed, and how accurate he was, I mean, it's just remarkable of, of how he could do those things. So can I assume that that's not very common, that you're switching things around because of one guy's talent and skill set? Oh yeah, yeah, I think definitely. I mean, we kind of get locked in our little zone and this is our offense, this is what we do, this is what we believe in, and, and we recruit to that. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we, we knew at that time with where we were at his program, like we had something special and, and we had to let Patrick be Patrick and make those plays um, because it made us a lot better football team, made us more explosive. You know, I think we led the, the nation in offense that uh, second year that he was playing. So um, we definitely reaped the rewards from it down the stretch. Um, but yeah, it is uncommon for us to just, you know, kind of change the way we do everything for, for one guys. But it's also uncommon to have a talent like him. So, um, but yeah, we, we don't usually change things that dramatically around one person. How often do you keep in touch with Patrick nowadays? Yeah, just mo mainly text message now. Um, he's so busy with everything he does, and so just a text message here and there, me checking up on him or him checking up on my family. Um, so pretty pretty small talk, and, and then, you know, usually get a chance. Uh, a bunch of us old tech guys will get together once a year and try to um, go to Vegas or something to do something fun. But, um, but yeah, mainly just uh, checking up on one another just through uh, text message. What's something about Patrick Mahomes that the rest of us don't know? Um, you know, one thing that's interesting is, is that people just think him, of him as a backyard uh, style of football player, you know, running around making plays with his feet and 
Um, but when Andy Reid came and, and him and the GM and the quarterback coach all came and uh, did an interview with Patrick, they sent him a playbook a week before that's this thick and he has to memorize all this different stuff and they put him on the board and they ask him questions. And, and that's, that's general, that's what people do when they're evaluating these quarterbacks um, before the draft, it's a pre-draft thing. And so um, when we left that meeting, um, Andy Reid told Coach Kingsbury and I that you know he'd been doing this for 30-something years and that's the best onboard session that he's ever been a part of. So I think people just don't realize how smart he is and, and how that has a big deal of his success as well. You know, they see him as, as this new age, you know, athletic quarterback that's making all these crazy throws on the run. But, um, but the, the time, the effort he puts into it to study it and, and really know what's going on from, from an X's and O's standpoint, um, he puts in the time to be great. And, and I think people are seeing the, uh, the reward from that. So I have a sense of how you're going to answer this question, but what's it like to be the guy who helped discover Patrick Mahomes? Uh, I mean, and, and to, I mean, Patrick's earned everything that he's gotten so far, but it's always great to see the kids that you have relationships with and, and you see them work so hard for these goals and, and for that um, to all come true and, and unfold be before your eyes and the whole world see it. Um, yeah, it just makes me extremely proud, um, you know, that I was able to be a part of that process. Um, but extremely happy for him and his family and, and where this can, can take him. And financially, obviously, you know, they say he's about to be the highest paid guy in the NFL. And so um, to see the work he put in to get there um, when everything wasn't perfect and we weren't winning Big 12 championships or national championships, but kept working, fighting, knew he had the talent, super competitive through it all, never complained about a thing, um, was a team guy all the time. So. Um, he deserves all this. And you know, Morris will continue to chart Pat Mahomes. In the meantime, while we go through this coronavirus and the effects on all of sports, we do look forward to the football season. September 3rd is when the Cardinals are set to open the year at Northwestern State in Louisiana.